Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi again, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2, where Art Kirsch and I get to talk to the lovely Dr. Liz Lister about everything important, particularly our health, right? right. Dr. Hi, Liz, Dr. Good Liz. to see you. Well, hello, gentlemen. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm hoping you can help uh, me and our audience uh, today to understand something that I hear a lot about. Uh, and there are a whole bunch of phrases. I'm not going to give them all because they're all separate topics. But the one that has always sort of uh, confused me is antioxidants, because anti seems to be against something. You know, I might I might pay more attention if it was pro-oxidants. Oh, good. Eat these things and you'll be fine. But can you... Uh, uh, enlighten us to what antioxidants are, why yeah, they're important. Yeah, don't we need oxygen? Yeah, come yeah. on, what's this anti-stuff? That's right, you're absolutely right. It is confusing and it is reversed from how we normally think about it. Mm. So think about it this way. when If you're burning a wood fire, the wood is the fuel and you're burning the fire. So we get all the benefits from the fire. However, there's also little embers or little cinders, little sparks that fly off to the side that if you're not careful can hurt you. And that's exactly how this works. When our cells burn fuel, it lets off these little sparks. I think of them as little embers that could be harmful. And those are what we refer to as oxidative stress. So the process of using oxygen by our cells gives off these little byproducts, and that can cause damage to the cells. It can cause damage to the DNA, okay? And so we have to put out those little fires, kind of tamp it out, and those are the antioxidants. Mm. Okay. Interesting. So uh, it, it, this stuff that's being given off, are they oxidants? So it's oxidative stress, and I'm not gonna. I don't want to give anybody high school biology PTSD <laughs> because we're talking about electrons and and the different okay. charges. Yeah, that and would the, be. I'm not. It, it, okay. it, it's there. not necessary. I, I prefer <laughs> the image of those little sparks that have to be tamped down so that they don't hurt the cells and the DNA and the tissue that is surrounding yeah. uh, the places that the energy is actually being burned. So you've got the factory burning the fuel, giving us what we need. Right. And then you've got these little byproducts and you have to kind of tap, tamp them down. So is this, is this a, a, a big problem in our bodies? Have we, are we doing this since the time we're born? And we, it... Yes, yes, wonderful question. So first of all, I'm not going to say it's a big problem, but it's an ongoing process. All our cells are burning fuel all the time, and so that is always happening. But there are other ways that our bodies get oxidative stress that we are increasingly experiencing. So one is more toxins in the foods that we eat, in our environment. Another is pathogens. So if there's infection or we're exposed to <clears throat> some kind of virus or something like that that we all are learning a lot about, we're all thrown in the deep end learning about that. And also stressors. So mental, emotional stressors, all of these increase the oxidative load on our bodies and on our cells. And that is why we're hearing so much about antioxidants, especially in vitamins and in the foods that we eat, in good foods that we eat that have ingredients that are antioxidant yeah so it, it is important stuff can you it, can you get too many antioxidants okay you probably cannot overdo it with food it is probably possible to overdo it with vitamins so hmm. the vitamins that are antioxidants are all vitamins that you've heard of they are the water soluble vitamins so including vitamin c vitamin e Okay, but actually E and also vitamin A, those are also fat soluble. Okay, so vitamin C, that's why it's such a big topic of discussion, especially lately. Vitamin A, vitamin E. There are studies where they're trying to see what's the upper limit of what people should supplement. Hmm. But antioxidants are also in foods. The foods with bright colors, the blueberries, the strawberries, mm. those are going to have... Uh, 
carrots have beta carotene, uh, lycopene and tomatoes. All right, anything with bright colors is going to have these antioxidant properties that are gonna help tamp out these little fires going on all over our bodies. Yeah. So not, not withstanding, notwithstanding my skepticism of it's a marketing gimmick, uh, which it may very well be for uh, many people who are saying, uh, uh, have this product because it provides uh, uh, the necessary uh, antioxidants, is that it seems to me that what you may be saying is that uh, in the last 50, 70, 100 years, since our environment has changed, there are more things putting stress on our body and making it more difficult for the amounts of antioxidants we would get naturally, let's say through foods, to keep us in balance. And therefore, where the, the these marketing uh, uh, techniques of eat more blueberries, eat more tomatoes, eat more, have more vitamin C, uh, or, or other antioxidant uh, product claiming uh, products, are probably uh, grown out of the fact that our body needs more of them than ever before because of things that we never faced before. Is that yeah. sort of a, a fair way to look at it? I think that's a great way to to sum that up. And that's what people talk about eating the rainbow. Yes. Eating yeah. the rainbow, bright colors, different colors, Color, red, yeah. orange. Put a lot of color on your plate. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And the darker the colors, you've probably noticed that the food from the farmer's market, which is tends to be less treated, less preservatives added, mm. has these beautiful, brighter colors. Yeah, yeah. More antioxidant content in those foods. Yeah, that's great. And I guess if we just eat a, a balanced diet, uh, we're going to get enough antioxidants. There's no uh, recommended daily dosage or something, is there? There are. There are recommended daily dosages of all the different vitamins and these kinds of substances that are in the fruits and vegetables. And to our discussion of marketing and what's happening, it's, it is hard to know how much of it is marketing and how much of it is real. Mm. I think it's safe to say that over the past hundred years, we know that farming techniques have changed and have decreased the nutrient content of food. We This is well established, okay? And so, uh, the, you know, there's more to talk about in terms of that, but that's why a lot of people suggest that at, at least a good quality multivitamin is probably beneficial. This is a big contention. It's a bone of contention in the regular medical world. Can you get enough nutrients from what you eat? Mm. Uh, it's, it's, it is questionable, uh, hard to prove one way or the other. Uh, but I do think that the nutrient content in food has gone down over the last hundred years and that some attention to fortifying what we take in during a day, either with supplements or with paying more attention to fruits and vegetables is mm. very important for production of an intake of antioxidants. Yeah. Good to, make our, to make our, our audience feel maybe a little bit better, if you can answer this question in the, in the affirmative, is that you probably can't overdose on antioxidants. Your body will use what it needs of it and dispose of the rest. Uh, but you probably, if, if they start giving out pills that say this is provide you with lots of antioxidants, you probably shouldn't overdose on them either. I, th I, I think so. I think that that's why I talk about a, a good quality basic multivitamin mm. as opposed to mega dosing of A or mega dosing of E. So mega dosing of one particular vitamin as opposed to a more general rounded approach. You know, a lot of people, a lot of famous scientists have looked at uh, vitamin C and mega dosing with vitamin C in particular for its anti-illness uh, properties. I personally take a more of a, a balanced rounded approach and try to eat my veggies and fruits as much as possible. So would it be fair to say that if you uh, pay attention to your antioxidants, then you're probably pro-health? Sorry. Nice. Good. I, I'm on the antioxidant bandwagon. More color on my plate. Thank you. Welcome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube,
and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.